Welcome to our tutorial on how to set up your computer for audio recording. Let's begin with a warning. Make all your equipment connections while the equipment is powered off, otherwise you could end up shorting something out. Cables, pins, and hardware. All of those things are very sensitive. Exactly how to set up your system depends on a number of factors. What type of project do you want to create? Are you recording a five-piece band live? Sequencing MIDI clips? Or recording a voiceover for a video? What type of external hardware do you have? How many inputs and outputs? Internal and external signal processors? An external console? What kind of computer hardware do you have? Portable but fewer inputs? A really powerful desktop stuck in one place but capable of supporting a lot of inputs? In this lesson, we'll be covering the basics, how to get sound in and out of your workstation. First of all, to hear audio you've recorded, connect your headphones or external sound system to your audio interface, the internal or external sound card. This sound can't be heard through your computer's default sound output or computer speakers. You need to plug your speakers or headphones right into the audio interface. When connecting your audio interface to a stereo system, connect the left channel, often the white plug, to the first output and the right channel, often the red plug, to the second output of the audio interface. Home stereo systems often use RCA connectors. You can use an adapter or a special cable to convert from the TRS or TS connectors, more commonly known as quarter or patch cables, used on some audio interfaces, to the RCA connectors used on your home stereo. Now let's talk about how to get audio into your computer. You'll probably need to manipulate the audio interface's settings through its own control panel, not through Cubase, so make sure you're familiar with how to do this. Be sure to check the documentation that comes with your audio interface. Generally, it's available via the control panel. Your instrument and microphone inputs will be connected with quarter-inch cables or a quarter-inch and XLR combination plug for microphones and for instruments that usually have a lower level. For mono, use the left input. For stereo inputs, use the first input for the left input and the second input for the right input. If you need a track from a CD, Cubase lets you grab those once you've got the software open so you don't need to line the player into the audio hardware unless you have some other reason for doing so. Remember, when connecting your microphones to turn off your audio interface's phantom power supply if your mic needs such power, like a condenser mic. Certain microphones, such as condenser mics, need the power or they don't transmit signal. Be careful about damaging other types of mics with the phantom power. For example, some ribbon microphones don't need phantom power, but they can be hurt by it, whereas dynamic microphones don't need the power but aren't hurt by it either. Be sure to have all connections completed before you turn on the phantom power and to shut off the phantom power before unconnecting your condenser mic. Set your levels coming into the audio interface. For example, set your instrument's volume to the optimal level, which for most, let's say, keyboards is about 80 to 100% of maximum volume. With keyboards, you might need more or less depending upon the sound bank. Always do a check of the loudest parts in your song before you start recording. If your audio interface has a signal gain control, set this to get the level of signal you need. You're going to want to get the best levels you can, the highest levels you can, from the hardware rather than boosting levels later on within Cubase. Essentially, your equipment connection will look something like this. If you want to monitor or listen to your input before it gets to Cubase, you'll need some kind of external mixer or application where the input audio can be sent right back out again with a through setting. This concludes our brief overview of getting sound in and out of your workstation. For more information about this, please see our course on digital recording, mixing, and mastering. In our next tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to set up Cubase to receive your audio signals.